Next, we discuss early deadline first scheduling algorithm. To understand the logic behind EDF, let's first revisit uh, the previous slide where we had the problem. Remember that in this uh, problem, uh, the source of the problem was the fact that at t equals 50, we preempted p2 in favor of p1 because p1 uh, had a shorter period. Therefore, p1 had higher priority uh, compared to p2 just because of its period. However, p2 had a closer deadline and p1 had a deadline that was further away and it still had sufficient time to execute its instructions. But unfortunately, uh, the rate monitoring uh, scheduling algorithm does not look at the deadlines but looks at the period for the uh, priority. And that's why we missed the deadline for P2, although we still had some slack time for P1. And that's uh, the idea with EDF. As the name implies, this time we base the priority on the deadline rather than the period. So looking at the very same problem uh, with the same values, this time P at t equals zero, P1 will be scheduled again first because P1 has the uh, closest deadline. P2 has a deadline at 80, but P1 has it at uh, 50. So we give the CPU to P1 and P1 completes. So now we're free uh, in terms of P1 until the next P, uh, occurrence of P1. Therefore, we can schedule P2 now. P2 starts uh, execution and at t equals uh, 50, P1 appears again, but this time its next deadline is at 100 for the second occurrence of P1. So at the moment, I have two processes in hand. One ha has a remaining uh, 10 uh, time units of uh, execution and a closer deadline. The other one has uh, 25 time units of execution, but a further deadline. So let me first try to finish the one that has the closest deadline so that at least I don't have any problems with that. Then I can deal with the next one. So we don't this time preempt P2. We continue with P2 because P2 has closer deadline. P2 completes at t equals 60. Now we schedule P1. And here we have the deadline for P2, but we are already done with that, so no problem. P1 completes uh, at 85, and then uh, uh, we can look at the next occurrence of P2, which arrived at 80. P2 executes for some time, but uh, then P1 arrives again. Now the new deadline for P1 is here at 150, but the deadline for this entry of P2 is at 160, it's further away. So this time we preempt uh, P2 uh, in favor of P1. P1 completes, then we go back to P2. And here, as you can see, we don't have any problems. Actually, this shows that in this case, we had a solution. But with rate monotonic scheduling, we made the wrong decisions. And although there is a feasible solution, we picked another solution which was not feasible for this high load, 94% high load of uh, the uh, processes. With EDF, we were still able to schedule this. So unlike rate monitoring algorithm, the strength of EDF is in the fact that it is using dynamic uh, priorities. The priority is set dynamically according to the deadline of the current uh, execution in hand. And uh, therefore, we're also not, uh, we don't need the processes to be periodic. EDF can work also with aperiodic uh, processes. If it's periodic, still it can work, but it also handles uh, a periodic processes.